Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is timeline? So this node is a timeline. Let me run my example, and I'm going to show you what we might use a timeline for. My timeline is going to tell this sphere to change its emissive property, and it's going to basically pulse. We see it current on, off, on, and then off. And then it will stop. The timeline is used to basically, over time, output values based on a curve that you've told it to use. For example, you might want to have something rotate in a circle over four seconds. You'd use a timeline to output the values for the new positions and have it rotate over the four seconds. Or you might want something to flicker, like a light flickering on and off, but kind of in a set pattern rather than random. You can use a timeline for that. You want to do easing in and out of objects. You'd use a timeline for that. So let's go ahead and look at what the timeline does and how we'd use it. Let me delete our timeline example, and we're going to create a new timeline. We type in add timeline, and we'll find it at the bottom. Now note, if I was to go into my UI and go into my event graph, type in add timeline, well, it's not going to be there, even if I uncheck context sensitivity. Timelines cannot exist inside of widget blueprints. They are specific needs, and they can only work inside of actors base blueprints, probably pawns and things like that, but I don't believe they were, I know for a fact they don't look, work in widget blueprints, and I don't believe, well, I could probably look, hold on a second. I don't believe they work in objects is what I'm trying to say, and of course, failing miserably at, uh, here we go, here's an object, parent class object, and timeline, yep, they won't work in objects either. For the most part, they need a, a tick that's linked into the engine. That's what you need because the timeline runs on the tick to determine what time it is as it goes along. So your timelines are probably only going to work in your base blueprints, not inside of objects and widget blueprints or UMGs. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at how they'd work. Here's our base timeline. We have a bunch of inputs. These are covered in separate videos along with the outputs. And then if we double click to open it, we'll get a new tab and we have a bunch of options. Now all these options are covered in a separate video, but we're really quickly going to cover how we might create one and use it, hook it up, and what we use it for. So in a previous example we were adjusting, if we look here, the value, which is a float, of our emissive strength on our material, and we're making it pulse. So let's go ahead and repeat that. We're going to add a float track. When you have a float track, you have the ability to name it. This is simply what it shows in the output. So we'll put like float output. If we go look back at our event graph, we'll see a float output name. You can of course right click and rename that as needed. You can delete to get rid of the entire thing or just the height to change the height of our graph itself. This is our external curve we're not using that's covered separately. And this is synchronized view. Basically it keeps multiple curves in sync. By multiple curves, I mean you could go ahead and add in a vector and a color, for example, and have three different outputs to drive three different things over this time. We're going to go ahead and go back in, and we're going to delete the external curves, the extra curves because we don't need it, and we'll go ahead and, well, add a few things to this. Now, by default, it's going to come in with the time. This is the maximum length of the curve or the timeline and how long it's going to run for. So let's set this to two seconds, for example. Now we have a curve of two seconds. We can do this to zoom in and out as needed based on our points. We have no points, so this really serves no purpose right now. If we want to add points, we can right click anywhere and add a key. Because this is a float curve, we can have, add one key to each position. Curves are covered separately. They have their own video to cover each type. Since this is a float curve, I'm just going to add a key to the beginning and add a key to the end. You'll notice they're not exact. You can just select them and change their time. What we're going to do is we're going to pulse this item. We're going to go from zero, have it turn on, and then have it turn back off. We'll select the last one, two seconds of value of zero. We'll go somewhere in the middle and add a key. Let's say we wanted to drag this to right about there. Let's say we want it to time for one and a value of three. 
So it's going to go from 0 to 3 to 0. So it's going to glow and then not glow. Since these are curves, we can adjust our interpolation. So I'm going to do this to make it a little smoother. And then I can do this now to zoom in and out on our extents. Now, since I had a curve point key selected, it did that. If you have nothing selected, it gives you all of it. What this is going to do is over two seconds, at any point in time that our timeline is running, we're going to get the value on the curve. And that value is going to come out in our float output because this is our float output curve. 75% of the way through, let's see, it would be somewhere around here. We might get a value of 1.53. When we start off, we're going to get a value of zero. And it's going to give us every value over the two seconds. Now, if I was to save and compile this, we're still going to get an error because nothing's hooked up. We have our different starters here. I'm just going to tell it to play. And then on the update, I'm going to tell it to set the scalar parameter material. That means every time this thing updates while well, it's ticking, so every tick, this dot timeline is going to update its time, it's going to give you a new value, the update execute node is going to run, and something's going to happen. Plug the float output into here, compile and save. We still have an error because I have some things referencing stuff right here. Let me go ahead and just get rid of that for now, and I'll show you that in a second. Well, actually, I can show you that now. So this error happened because I'm trying to get a timeline component. Now, if you were to notice here, there's no output node. Um, no, there's no output pin. Unlike other things where I create things, there's no way to output and get this timeline. Well, the timeline is technically a component that you add at runtime. If you go over to our variables and look under components, you'll actually find it was added as a timeline. Now it has a specific name. We can click up here and rename it. Like this would be my timeline example. And you'll notice it now shows up here. And anytime you need to access the component, for example, I'm trying to get the length of it, you'd have to plug it in right here. Now these nodes are covered separately in a different video, but that's just something to note. If you need to get the timeline component to do something with it, it's not going to show up, like for example, get timeline component. It's not going to be over here. You're not going to be able to pull off to promote to variable. It's going to automatically add itself over here under your components. Let's go ahead and run this. We'll hit T, and then we should see a pulse and shut off. Now if I hit T again, nothing's going to happen. And that's normal, because every time I tell it to press T, it plays it. We're not playing from start. We're never rewinding it. We're never setting the time to anything else. We're simply playing from start to end, and then once it's at the end, we're telling it to play from the end or the current position every time. And these inputs are covered separately. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want something to repeat, you're probably going to want to play from start. When it's finished, it's going to fire off a finish node. So for example, anytime we want something to happen, we can hook it up to finished, and we'll know when this is done. If we wanted to change our timeline, you might run into an issue. So let's say we want to add a key here and we actually want it to go up. Now we want to go down. We'll add another key here. Let's go and zoom to our things and we'll go up to here. And now we have um, this. We have it basically going up and down. We'll, we'll interpret these a little bit to give us a little bit of roundiness. But now the item should go up, down, up, down. We'll go back, we'll hit play, we'll hit T. And there you go. You'll notice it's going up, down, up, down. You might run into an issue, and this happens from time to time, where when you update your curves in your timeline, especially if you update like the time itself, the length, or you tell it to loop, for example. And like if you notice, it didn't loop. We told it to loop, but it didn't loop. We'll try it again. Still not looping. This timeline, because it is using a curve that's internal and these properties are all set up in here, these properties don't apply themselves until you save and compile. So we need to save the com timeline and compile it so that way it has the valid values. Now you notice it will continue pulsing because we told it to loop and it saved it. So if you ever have an error where your timeline's not acting like normal, make sure you save and compile. You'll notice anytime I make a change, it's not actually showing anything up here. So it's kind of annoying because you don't really know. So just make changes to the timeline, save and compile. It's the safest way to get your desired result. 
So that's it. That is going to wrap up our timeline node. It is, again, a node that runs over time. The time is determined internally based on the length. It will output the value from a graph or multiple graphs. That value comes out as an output value pin. Every update, it's going to have a new output value on each pin. Anything connected to the update wire will execute. And once everything's done, it will go ahead and play back, not play back, it will go ahead and fire off its finished one. It's useful if you need to drive something over time, but you don't want it hooked up to a tick, because this is basically, you kind of think of it as a fire and forget tick that'll run for a certain duration. That's the easiest way to think of it. Hey, I need something to happen over time. That is going to wrap up our what is timeline video.